Okay. Hello, Karen here, the essential musician. I'm going to try this on the, the Facebook page today. Um, today, we're going to talk about a little phenomenon called bedtime revenge procrastination. And it's something that I didn't even know existed until I read this really interesting article a few weeks ago. And I thought, oh, what is this? It seems really interesting. And then I realized that it was, it used to be my normal. And I bet that it is also something that many of you watching also experience. I'm just going to pop over here and I'm looking at my other screen. I'm going to open um, Facebook over here because if there are any questions, um, then I'll be able to see them. I just have to shut off my sound. There we go. Okay. Bedtime revenge procrastination. Hands up. If this is someone, if you are someone who stays up too late, mindlessly scrolling social media or doing whatever, and you know that you're stealing from your own bedtime in order to do this, and you know that what you really should be doing is sleeping, and you know that you should be going to bed earlier. And yet, there you are at one in the morning when you know you're getting up early. You're there at one in the morning and you're sending work emails. And you know what? Maybe getting some back. And maybe playing Candy Crush because maybe you're close to, you know, 300 and 3,987 levels. Um, this was my normal. And some of you, uh, some of you don't know me, but some of you do. I, I'm a, I'm a department chair of a, of a music department in a university. That's my second round as chair. When I was chair the first time, it was not pretty. I had zero work life separation at the time. I was miserable, honest, obviously. I mean, who wouldn't be? And I always thought that I was a night person. So especially when I was chair and had zero boundaries. I really needed that time for me. And it ended up being from 11 o'clock, 11 p.m. on. And I think that the reason for that was because I knew that that was time that reasonable people would not expect me to be available to answer their questions. And when you're a department chair, when you're an administrator like that, um, it's or someone who's in in demand because you're the, the point connector, right? Because that's what department chairs really are. When you're someone like that, who holds a lot of information that people need access to, it's really easy, especially when you're new at it, especially easy, it's, it's, it's easy for you to allow people to have access to you all the time. And also, if you're anything like me, um, I felt like if I didn't work all the time that I would forget things, that the emails would just get, would just rack up like crazy, uh, and they did, and that I would just lose track of things. And so, around 11 o'clock every night, I could feel the rush of cortisol. I could set my watch by it. 11 o'clock every night, I thought, okay, now I'm going to go practice. Now I'm going to do my taxes. Now I'm going to, you know, do the thing that needs doing that requires really deep concentration because I knew that I could safely ignore people and no reasonable person would expect me to be around. So that was time for me, but I was still getting up at seven. And actually when I was chair last time, my kids were little. So sometimes I was getting up earlier than that. So it wasn't pretty. It didn't turn out well for me and um, it, it was messy. And so I knew I had two years between finishing being chair the first time and becoming chair the second time it started July 1st, 2020. We all know what happened in 2020. So here I am running a music department for the second time. But in those two years between being a hot mess and now, I can safely say that I I think I've, I'm not going to say that I've beat it, but I am a recovering bedtime revenge procrastinator. I used to think I was a night person. Turns out I'm just like everybody else. And now, how many years did we have our New Year's resolution be, I just want to be in bed, lights out by midnight? Never happened. For years and years and years and years and years, that was our New Year's resolution, and it never happened. Not maybe once, twice total. And now all of a sudden, if I'm not in bed by 1130, I'm, it's not pretty either. I'm an ogre. So um, how did that happen? I'm not completely sure, but I think it was a number of different things. I spent a lot of time 
revamping my daily schedule, how I organize myself. Um, one of the things that I paid really close attention to, and this is when lockdown happened. So this was actually an opportunity to really have a hard look at how I was managing the day-to-day -day things, right? And really without all the commute and the busyness and the shuttling kids from place to place, it gave many of us an opportunity to look, to look at, really give a hard look at what we're doing and sometimes um, recreate ourselves. And I did that. So part of that was because as a bedtime revenge procrastinator or whatever it's called, um, staying up too late meant it was really easy to sleep in. All of a sudden I didn't have to be anywhere. So in March, when we went into lockdown a year ago, gosh, it's almost a year ago, um, I wasn't chair. So I wasn't needed on email at 8.30 in the morning. I could just, you know, do whatever. As long as I got my work done, it was fine. So I was sleeping in and setting a bad example for the kids and that had to change. So for me, it started with a morning routine and I don't get up crazy early. Now I've tweaked it constantly tweak 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 multiple versions and now my morning routine starts at 6 25 and i'm at the computer at 9 a.m so i don't get up crazy early less people get up sooner than that but what i do in that time during my morning routine is it gives me time for me that time when maybe i would sleep in in the morning because i was exhausted but that me time i took before was at night stealing from my sleep time doing stupid stuff now in my morning the one thing that will get me out of bed is journaling i love journaling and next week's blog post is all about the magic of the third page so that's a good one i had a really good time writing that one and that one's that one's good so if you're um interested in all about at all about um journaling next week's um blog post i think is is a is a must read i was happy with that one um, so I get up to do my journaling and I thought, okay, if I'm going to get up and do journaling, I said, I love journaling 30 minutes, if I'm going to get up and do journaling, I need coffee. So I had to book in some time to make the coffee. And I thought, well, it really bothers me when the dishes don't get done because the dishwasher is full and then we have nowhere to put the dirty. So while I'm waiting for the coffee to brew, now I empty the dishwasher because that bothered me for a long time. So I worked that into my morning routine. Um, and there's exercise in my morning routine. I don't love exercise. But I've automated all of these things. I get up in the morning. I know exactly what I have to do. I know what workout I'm going to do. I don't have to think about it. And to make it really work, one of the things I do when I get up is I have my clothes set out the night before. It includes workout gear and a warm sweater so I don't get back into bed because I'm cold. All of these things link together. Now, let's talk about using oils to help. Um, I have made the association for myself that peppermint equals wake up time some people like peppermint in their diffuser at bedtime because it helps them breathe and sometimes i use it too but i have peppermint in my hand soap i make my own hand soap just castile soap and water and oils it's easy and there's peppermint in that strategically so when i get up in the morning turn off the alarm stumble into the bathroom wash my hands with the peppermint soap put on my clothes get downstairs to the kitchen turn on the water to boil and I fill the diffusers and there's three diffusers, the daytime diffusers, one in the kitchen, the one in my son's little work at home office for school and the one in my home office and all three of them have peppermint in them. Peppermint for me is morning wake up time and it's always the same. So at that point now there's wiggle room, but what I found was since I made time to give myself some exercise, it's not a lot y'all, it's like 20 minutes, give myself some exercise, write in my journal that I love, make some coffee, have some quiet time, see the thing I do in the morning, empty the dishwasher. I found that I didn't need the time at night anymore. Not just that, there were many other changes that I made that didn't show up in the blog post. I'm talking about the blog post that was released yesterday. Um, some of the other changes have to do with how I completely restructured how I plan my day. So ironically, my work work and home boundaries have never been stronger since I've started working from home. Because I was very intentional about this. So now that I know I'm not going to lose emails, I know that I have enough time during my work day, nine to five, Monday to Friday to get things done. And if stuff doesn't get done, it doesn't get done. I'm not wasting time during my work day. So when I shut down, the time after that is my time guilt-free. So I feel like I'm getting it now. 
And then bedtime routine, of course, that's important. And I've never been a good sleeper. So I've always had, not always, but for the past 10 years, I have a, a bedtime routine that's pretty ironclad. Um, but part of that nighttime routine before included getting to bed with good intentions and playing a few rounds of Candy Crush. It turns into social media, whatever. So this is something that I'm going to keep revisiting. Um, I think that just based on comments and what people have um, come to talk to me about when I released this blog post, I think there's some interest in how to revamp one's um, work life balance. And if you had told me two years ago that I would be standing here, sitting here before you talking about how, how to model work life balance, I would have said you are crazy, but you know what? I think I've kind of figured it out. So if this is of interest to you, let me know because I'm cooking something up and I think it would be really fun to explore this. And I'm thinking the first phase of that exploration is a little group coaching and maybe we're gonna talk about morning routines, bedtime routines and bedtime revenge procrastination. I think that'd be really interesting. <laughs> Anyway, I, that's kind of all I have to say. I don't see any comments over on Facebook. So I'm just going to wrap it up. In the comments, I will link to the blog post that was, was released yesterday. And like I mentioned, next week's blog post is all about journaling, but a specific kind of journaling because there's a million different kinds of journaling. I'm not going to tell you how to journal, but I'm going to tell you how I do it and why I think it's so great. Um, and then, uh, yeah, keep your eyes open for maybe an opportunity to do a little deep dive into morning and evening routines and uh, becoming recovering bedtime revenge procrastinators. I hope you are all doing so well, my friends. Stay well, stay warm if you're in Canada or anywhere it's cold. And I'll see you again next week. Bye.